Hello, welcome to Café Realist. Today, uh, another encounter, first chat with uh, someone met through Twitter. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, today or tonight, should I say? We changed a bit the, the schedule. Uh, reliable. Could could you introduce yourself to the, the listeners? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Eli or Reliable, whichever you prefer. Um, I use he, they pronouns. Uh, I am a... TTRPG player, GM, all sorts of stuff um, based out of uh, Corvallis, Oregon. So. Cool. The uh, The only thing I know about Oregon are from a very terrible sources. Well, I, it's from the movie as a kid, Short Circuit, um, because mm-hmm. the, the robot is lost in Oregon. So I know he mentioned something about strawberries there. And the second source of information for me is, um, what is it called? Gravity Falls. So uh, my knowledge of Oregon is absolutely abysmal, I'm afraid. We gotcha. Yeah, um, we definitely, the area that I'm in, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm in the Willamette Valley area. Um, so we have super great berries. I, I did not know that when I first moved here a year ago that the berries were going to be so freaking amazing. Um, but they're they're amazing they have marion berries here which i hadn't had before and then i tried them for the first time and i fell in love um it's also very wet here (laughs) (laughs) there will be times where it will rain for like a week straight and it's just like that's just how it's gonna be (laughs) um so uh yeah it's i i love it here i moved here from georgia a year ago and um i definitely prefer this weather over georgia's weather as georgia's hot and humid and Oregon's pretty much the opposite. So yeah, I'm going to continue on the trend of me being a complete fool. Uh, it's on the the Northwest Pacific, is it? Is it on the coast? Yeah, it's uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, we're right below Washington and right above California. Okay, cool. Amazing. I'm sort of in the like more north part of the West Coast of Oregon. I mean, I imagine the, the thing with Europeans when we we see a map of the U.S., it's always oh, this state is on the coast, so the whole state is on the coast. But we don't tend to realize that a full state of the United States is as big as, let's say, France or Germany. So if you're on the opposite mm-hmm. side of the t- state, you're still quite far. I imagine. Pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, I. I drove uh, from Georgia when I first moved here, um, and that was my first time driving across the country by myself, and it was an experience. <laughs> um, and I, I loved it. It was it was really nice seeing um, so many parts of the United States, and um, there were there are definitely some places that I want to be able to go back to when I have a little bit more time. But I got out of the car after that trip, and I was like, "I'm not driving for like a week. <laughs> I can't." <laughs> so it was like it was like three days straight of driving. And I was like, "I can't do this." So Georgia is all the way east. It's on the east coast, then. Yeah. Wow. I think the the furthest I've dro- driven here in the Europe was uh, beyond the Polish border. I'd be curious to compare the distance. I think I would be one third into the U S maybe halfway, but uh, certainly not that far. We got a a couple routine, uh, routine, uh, ice breaking questions. Uh, my first one is what is your routine like uh, at the moment? So with everything going on, so typically I am a lab assistant at Oregon state university uh, in the chemistry department. So, Typically what that means is I get all the labs set up for the students to do uh, throughout the term. But this term, everyone has been online, so there are no in-person labs. And we, the lab assistants, have also been uh, working from home. Um, So basically that means I like get up at my normal time to like go to work and um, do whatever online tasks we figure out for the day or for what, however the period of time is. Like, for instance, right now I'm working on a spreadsheet for one of the professors that uh, basically is organizing a bunch of data that students have collected. Um, So I'm working on that right now. We've been working on redoing some of the prep sheets that we have for the labs um, and just revamping them, making them a little bit more neat and a little bit more uh, correct to the processes that we actually do. 
Um, so that's pretty much, I, I work my like normal schedule time for that. Um, and during all of that, I'm typically like either watching Netflix. If one of my friends is on Twitch, I'm watching them on Twitch while doing stuff um, or thinking about RPG stuff and uh, writing down ideas as they come to me. Um, and then as soon as I clock out, <laughs> I'm still at my computer. <laughs> um, but uh, I basically I clock out. I um, if there's any like homework that I need to do on my computer, I do that because I'm also a computer science student. Um, so I do that if I need to, and if not, I am typically just uh, hanging out in discords, playing TTRPGs, planning TTRPGs, uh, whatever fills my time, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, have you picked up any new interest, hobby, or skills? Uh, I mean, the, again, really... as I was like, explaining for, for people who might be new, those questions were there when we started the lockdown. And I guess it's going on. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Uh, so nothing really new as much as like diving a little bit deeper on like some of the hobbies that I already have. Um, so a big thing with um, TTRPGs, I uh, started out with D&D, &D, 5e, and um, I, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, um, started out with D&D, &D, 5e, and that's all I knew for a very long time. Um, and the first thing outside of that that I played was a Firefly TTRPG. Um, oh, cool. And... I always said, like, from that point, I want to learn more RPGs, but, like, I just don't have the time to read, play, and all that stuff. And with D&D &D and Firefly, it was basically, like, I was thrown into a group or whatever, and, like, I was learning on the fly, which is good for me. Like, that's that's how I learn best. Um, but, like, trying to figure out... Uh, for, sit, having the time to, like, sit down and uh, read... Uh, core rule books, uh, listen to other people's podcasts, actual plays, and all of that stuff uh, was super hard before uh, quarantine and everything. So I'm I'm glad that I have the extra time to like actually get into that stuff now, because now I can like once I get out of quarantine or whatever, I can start actually like working on these things and have the time to uh, actually execute my plans instead of them just being sort of abstract ideas. <laughs> So. Cool. Uh, what shows do you listen to? Do you have any you, you would recommend? So uh, I started out on Critical Role because that was what my boss um, recommended to me, my boss at the time. She was super into Critical Role and um, she got me hooked and addicted. Um, past that, um, I would probably recommend uh, Dice Priori. I, I guessed on their channel a few times. Um, they have a really good a couple really good ongoing campaigns um and i guessed it had the privilege of guessing on ghost in the machine for a few weeks um and that is actually available on their spotify uh, if you find find them under podcasts um super super dramatic super um i, I feel like that was the first time that like i played D D, and i really felt like i was doing the things that I wanted to be doing and like role playing how I wanted to role play and my moves in combat were meaningful and all this other stuff. Um, so they've done a super great job um, at their D and D stuff and also the other stuff that they've been doing. Um, another podcast that I just um, picked up, I'm trying to remember, it's called Path of Night. I just remembered it. Uh, it's a Vampire of the Masquerade podcast um, because I just started getting into World of Darkness stuff. Um, and they actually just started, um, and I think they're seven episodes in right now, and it's it's pretty great. Um, it's I I typically lean towards the more dramatic stuff. I don't really like one of my things about um, playing TTRPGs is I really want um, I don't really lean towards a lot of combat. I lean towards more role pit play, and I want the role play to be meaningful. And that's something that I really gravitate towards in podcasts and actual plays as well as like making sure that like the role play and also like the combat as well can be meaningful. So when, when you do have combat, making sure that it is, it does have depth. It does have all the things that, um, 
all the things I want out of roleplay, I also want out of combat. So. And you you got your own Twitch channel. So what type of content do you produce? Because uh, uh, to be honest, I didn't take the time yet to to have a look. Uh, I, I'm I'm a very little consumer of uh, of Twitch, but uh, yeah, I didn't have a chance to grab yours yet. Yeah. So on my channel, um, which is uh, just reliable one on Twitch, um, typically is a hodgepodge of. Um, whatever I'm feeling at the time. Uh, these past two times I've gone live, I've been doing Twitch sings because I also sing. Um, other times have been uh, games that I'm interested in at the time, like Divinity Original Sin um, 2. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I always get mixed up on the name of that one. Um, I used to stream a uh, D&D group that I was running um, we moved that off of my channel just because it's, it's just me and my friends and we like to keep that um, that group just uh, private just for us. Um, but yeah, it's typically like what I stream on there is pretty much what I'm feeling at the time. Um, mainly because I end up guessing on so many other channels that like I, I put my D&D and other TCRPG content through them and then my channel is specifically for, okay, this is my time to relax and just like goof off playing a game and be terrible at this game and people can watch and be terrible it's fine I really wish I had a better broadband because I would really like to do that like I'd like to play I downloaded the complete collection of LucasArts old Star Wars games I'd love to go through uh, X-Wing Alliance or X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter and just stream that but uh, yeah, yeah. My, my internet is very bad, which is which is why for people watching us live, it's always better to catch us on YouTube afterwards because the the bandwidth is just absolutely terrible here in uh, it's central London. That's a that's a disgrace. Huh? Dang, I, I understand that. I've been in that boat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you have um, projects of tables, or are you running uh, something online uh, at the moment? So <clears throat> I'm not running anything that's being streamed right now. Um, the only game that I'm actually running is the one for me and my two friends from back home. It's a uh, D&D 5e game that I, um, the, the setting is homebrew and everything that I'm doing is like I've created it and they're going through some stuff right now and have to make some decisions that I typically will either tweet about or I'll talk about it while I'm um, live on Twitch. Um, just after the fact, because uh, they do watch my Twitter and my Twitch, and I don't want to give them any spoilers. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's the only thing that I'm running, uh, and that's not online. Um, as far as online stuff that I'm involved in, um, I am part of right now a mass campaign uh, that is uh, powered by the Apocalypse CTRPG um, system. I love masks. That's that's my favorite PBTA game. I should play it so much this more. Is, this is my first time doing any PBTA, and it's like, I love it so much. <laughs> um, so uh, we're doing this one for Pride Month, um, and it's me and a few other people that, um, people that I've met and people that I haven't met yet um, that are in the TTRPG community that are queer, that are people of color, and all sorts of other stuff. So it's a really great group, and we've been uh, talking in chat a lot about, like, characters and how they interact and everyone just like loves each other's characters it's so great um so yeah that's um something that we've been working on we just recorded the first episode um and it's gonna go live tonight i think Ooh. at um i think it's at eight uh eastern time so that that's uh that's pretty great and i'm excited for that um Next month, I've just signed up to be part of a Monster of the Week one-shot. It's going to be a charity stream, um, which I've been... Monster of the Week was the first Powered by the Apocalypse game that I was exposed to like through an actual play, and I've been wanting so bad to play ever since <laughs> I saw it. Um, so I'm so glad that I'm getting to play finally, um, and especially for a charity stream. Uh, we're going to be raising money for Color of Change, um, so that's, that's going to be great. Um, I always get of that. Go ahead. I, I always get confused. Uh, I I mean I know the difference, but between Monster of the Week and Monster Heart, I've I've tried Monster of the Week, but I really like to try Monster Heart as well. 
And I'd like to play more Monster of the Week. I'm I'm trying. Um, so I right now I'm in those two, and then I'm in a text campaign that is Apocalypse World. I'm like I really hope I don't sit here and get like all three of these mixed up and start just mixing up lore and rules and all this other stuff. But luckily they they run so similarly, I should be okay. But I'm also scared that that's going to be my downfall. So. <laughs> Well, at the same time, I mean, that's the issue I had when I was trying to run uh, Dungeon World. You s you're supposed to to play your character to say what your character is doing, but you're not supposed to put the the rules at the front. So you you rather activate rules rather than enforce them. And uh, when I was playing it uh, for the first time as a some more more experience with, uh, for lack of better term, traditional games. And my players were in that situation also. Everybody would always stare at the character sheet and be like, oh, I want to activate that. I, I want to use that skill. And we had to come back and say, no, 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 no. Just tell me what your character is doing and we'll decide together what gets activated. But people were really stressed out by by that approach. So so I guess, I guess if you get the good practice from one of those three games, it works for the others as long as you have a, a facilitator who knows the rules well enough to say, "Oh, yeah. wait a second, you just activated the uh, uh, whatever it's called." Uh, but uh, yeah, seven, nine, you you will succeed with <laughs> with a, yeah. a thingy. I um, my the game that I run, I, I've run a few D and D five E games in the past, and I always have to. Um, in the beginning, it was really I was really pounding into. Like guys, don't ask me. Can I roll this? Can I make an? Make, can I make an athletics check? Can I uh, make a perception check? Tell me what you're looking for because one, I might not even ask you to roll. Yeah. <laughs> and two, um, like give the opportunity for me to like say, okay, are you want make a perception check or okay, make an insight and in investigation check or whatever. If I say that and like you're not wanting to do that or like you're wanting to go a different route, then we can have the conversation of, okay, well, we can adjust it to be that or okay, it's going to be higher DC, whatever with that. Um, so like that's something I'm always having to pound <laughs> into players about is like just like be a character, like be yourself. Because um, like if I'm walking around and I'm trying to find something in my kitchen, I don't say out loud. I would like to make, make an investigation check in my kitchen. I, I just go try to find it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing. Um, it's sort of like the idea of like the person behind the curtain in Wizard of Oz. Um, the wizard, like this huge, powerful being that's doing all these things, and he's like actually just behind a curtain and like doing all the stuff. But like, we want that curtain to stay up, and we want him to like continue to be this big powerful being even though like he's just a person so so you you mentioned pbta you mentioned dnd you, you're running strictly dungeons and dragons or did you try being the facilitator or whatever it's called uh, depending on the game uh, for pbta or so, other types of games i so i haven't tried uh being the gm for pbta at all um i'm very experienced with being G DM for D and D, but I've also been a storyteller for Call of Cthulhu for one shot, um, and then also a game master for. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, I did a one shot that was Honey Heist, um, and that was that was a lot of fun. That was actually the worst, the worst first <laughs> thing that I ever ran was Honey Heist. Wow, amazing! Yeah, the group that I got together was pretty great, and. It was such a fun time. Um, I think those are the only things that I've run, now that I think about it. Um, I want to run other things, but I, I kind of have this rule of, like, I want to, like, have played it or have, like, had enough time to, like, super get familiar with the rules before I um, run it myself. Um, so took me a while to, re a while to realize that, but, uh, yeah, only recently I realized that I really suck at reading a book and trying to run it uh, that's how that's how i used to learn my the f all, like the first three games i ran i barely read the books i just had played it for a long time and then 
I did the rules the way I remembered them and probably the way the game masters were doing it, which might not have been the, the actual quotation mark right way of doing it. So now, no, I'm I'm trying to embrace that and say, okay, if I want to run something, I will find people to run it for me first, and then uh, and then find out uh, this way. Uh what was I going? Which can be like, that can be like super hard, honestly. I, there have been so many times that I've ended up in forums where everyone's like, okay, we're all ready to play this game. Who can run it? And then dead <laughs> silence. And. That's just how it is. No one wants to run because everyone's like, I would rather play or I want to play before I can run. And like, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. Luckily, I haven't had to do that yet. And when I do it, it's going to be interesting. But um, it's, it is super hard to find GMs. And I wish more people were confident in their skills to like step up and be the facilitator for uh, these games because we definitely need more GMs out there. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think it, uh, I recently found out. I, I had heard of them for a long time, but uh, I only recently joined something called the Gauntlet, where you got a, a lot of of game designers while they're testing their games, and they 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 actually do offer a lot of tables, including some uh for for people like me who are in the the British time zone. Uh, there, there's quite a lot of game uh, which are available, so I'm gonna play a. Uh, a couple over there, but but what I found out is that uh, now with online games, which are getting a bit more popular, very often the game designers themselves are running the game as a way to promote their games. So that that's a, that's a good way to uh, to jump on board. I know I'm, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm promoting my game mainly through saying, "Hey, join a session. I'm running it. You want to play it?" Uh, and so on. Uh, it's it's still a play test, but to be honest, it's ninety person demo if I'm promoting my games rather than really looking for for feedback. I still get amazing nuggets of feedback now and then, but uh, yeah, it's about trying to build up uh, people. And yeah, a lot of people do do that when you follow game designers here and there. So and it's quite cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, the Call of Tulu. Actually, I'm very excited because um, next week, uh, I think the 17th. So yeah, that's pretty Wednesday. I'm gonna have. I, I hope I pronounce his name correctly. Uh, Chris Spivey, the author of Arlem Unbound, who's gonna be uh, with me for an interview. And I just downloaded this the PDF of, of Arlem Unbound. For for people who don't know it, it's. Uh, it's being republished by Chaosium itself. It's a Call of Duty supplement you play in the 1920s in Harlem. And uh, I'm a big fan of everything in a historical setting and you, you find out about that setting through role-playing games. And uh, yeah, th this one, it, it starts really cool. Uh, it's, it looks very, very uh, exciting and interesting. I'm, I'm curious to, to read more uh, about it. I don't know if you dabbled with that one. Huh? I have not. Um, so the only Call of Cthulhu that I have run or even like interacted with was um, literally like the starter set because <laughs> um, it was free on Roll20 and I was like I really want to do this um, and I pulled my two best friends and I was like okay I'm gonna we're gonna try this we're gonna see what happens they super enjoyed it um, they they always get the feeling that I'm trying to kill them and depending on the day like that could be the goal, but <laughs> um, it really just like I, I love Call of Cthulhu as a system, just because I love like I love the feel of like you going in and like that first encounter that you have, where like there's probably there might be one person in your group that's like, oh, this is haunted. Like obviously that's what this is, but everyone else is like something else is going on. Like there's no way. But, like, that first moment where, like, it's actually confirmed that, like, something else is going on. Like, um, in the game that I was running, it was, they're in this room and a bed literally, like, lifts up and knocks one of the players out of a window. And, like, they both see this happen. And it's just like, well, <laughs> that's, that's the end of that. <laughs> um, so... And they, they ended up back and they um, 
did all the other stuff but like that first moment where like they figure it out is just like always so it's as a gm i love that feeling i love the feeling of watching my characters figure things out so my, my players sorry are there any games at the moment you you notice and you you want to try uh, you want to find a table so you can learn it and maybe run it yourself so um definitely powered by the apocalypse stuff um just because that's what my my friends have been talking a lot about um and hyping up to me um i've been wanting to do more vampire the masquerade um i was involved in a play by post community that um i ended up leaving because uh just some toxicity in the community that i refused to be involved with so i didn't really get to get very involved in that before leaving so i'm like looking for another um avenue for that just because vampires are probably like my go-to um I, I love vampires for some reason like in fantasy i just love them <laughs> um especially like vampires on tv vampires in movies i just i i love it um so i'm like looking for that um which i'm getting a little bit of my feel because my friend alexis has been running for us um it is a four-part series where it's D and D 5e, but we're playing vampires and it's so amazing. She's done so much work into like the mechanics and everything. And like everything is, I, I love the people that we're playing and I love the pe people that I'm playing with. And it makes it so much more enjoyable um, knowing that the GM is so invested in um, not only like our well being, but the story. So um, that's been pretty cool. Um, Outside of that, I don't really think there have been many other things on my radar as far as things to play. Um, I, I did, for the first time, um, play uh, something from the uh, World of Swordsfall. Um, this, I think it was this past Saturday, uh, where basically we were um, going back. It was basically a rap competition, and um, I cannot rap but my, my character could. So we were just, um, <laughs> we were just filling that in there. Um, but, uh, it was such a fun time because it all, all of us like basically had different techniques for like what we were bringing forward, um, to like go up against our competition. And finally, like I, a lot of, a lot of the techniques involved like insulting the other person or like go going and, um, just trying to find the flaws of the other person and finally i was just like that is not working for my character like i don't know what it is but my character is just like off kilter with that so we're just gonna like focus in and like try to tell a story with the rap or whatever and like see what happens i was doing well until i lost but um it like the versatility of that system and the versatility of like being able to play that um was amazing and I, I i want more of those um experiences where i can go i can go into something knowing like okay this is what everyone else is doing what if i do this is this a viable option and then figuring that out and like expanding more on um excuse me expanding more on um the initial like what i see the, that the players can do so what did you say is the title of this one? Because I'd love... I, I'm, uh, I'm rubbish at rapping as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, 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 never, from... I, I haven't even ever tried to be honest, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that would be absolutely dreadful. Yeah, everyone else on the stream like at least gave an attempt and I was just like, mm-mm. <laughs> oh, it was streamed I, I on top of that. Wow. Yes. Um, I, so I was filling in for someone and I, I had found out um, earlier that week and I was like, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, and I, I didn't know anything about the system when I was like, when I agreed to fill in. Um, but then um, Liz was like, okay, here's a system. And um, basically it's going to be like a rap competition and you don't actually have to rap, but like, this is how it's going to work. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then I like heard everyone else like spitting rhymes and like actually doing stuff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's from um, Swordsfall. If you follow uh, them on Twitter, it's... Oh, Swordsfall, okay. Swordsfall, yeah. If you follow them on Twitter, 
they have like a whole thing that they've been working on and this is one of the um things that has come out for it um it's super amazing um the setting is beautiful and i just i i fell in love like as we were like i fell in love literally as liz was giving like that initial uh talk about like what we were getting into and like the island that we were on and i was just like this is beautiful i love it so um, so what... if you want more information on that go ahead and follow them on twitter and they're, they're amazing so well i can ask you <laughs> so because when you said wrapping I, I, I was thinking that it might be uh a contemporary setting but uh it, so it's a different setting is it fantasy is it science fiction uh... it's so it's um if I had to peg it, it would be modern fantasy. Um, so, like, we're it's basically it's basically the same thing that like we're we're doing on a day to day basis. But like, mm, I, we're living sort of in an idealist world, I would say. In cool. The so, um, idealist from one person's perspective, because that does change from people to people. It was idealist for me, I will say, but it, yeah. Sounds awesome. Uh, I need to check that out. Yeah, the the next game uh, I sign up to uh, through the gauntlet. Uh, yeah, it's called Remembrance. It's gonna be a playtest, and you play uh, people uh, Irish uh, in Ireland in the 1920s. So it's uh, apparently it's there's, there's a fair warning in there. Uh, it's gonna be quite intense. It's about family feuds in a uh, in context of uh, uh, religious um, uh, what do you call that? Um, yeah, intolerance and so on. So so yeah, uh, that might be uh, that might be special. I was keen on signing up for anything. I signed up for this one, and we'll see uh, how intense uh, it gets. Because it can be quite intense, also role playing games. Uh, no, and then. Um, Cool. Um, so <laughs> running out of questions. Uh, we got a, a, quite a few people in the stream. That's nice, but nobody is keen on asking questions. Uh, sorry, it's a bit late, and I had a, a, a tiring day. Uh, what? What? <laughs> what can I? What more can I ask? I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to. I don't want to annoy you with that, uh, but I don't know if you want to speak about the news or not. Uh, I should have asked you before uh, we started, oh, no, to be totally honest, but, but but we rushed. Uh, to be honest, my sort of philosophy is just to yeah to go with whatever anyone wa wants to discuss about, so we, we can chat about yeah. something again. But since I'm sort of stupidly running out of subjects, and it's uh, it's kind of the elephant in the room, sadly, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know that, or I don't know if you looked at the the humble bundle, which has been extremely popular lately. Uh, they got quite okay. a few uh, very interesting games in there. Yeah, so um, I, I can talk a little bit about both. I'll, I'll talk about the bundle first, and then I'll segue into that. Um, so the bundle I actually just bought because my friend um, my friend Dustin sent it to me, and I was like. This looks interesting, and I they, I saw that there were like a bunch of games, and all you had to do is donate like more than five dollars. And I was like, okay, that's easy. That's literally like if any like corporations or something are out there watching, that's how you get me. As you say that there's a bundle, and you only have to pay X amount. It, I'm just done. <laughs> I just finally like have started going through the the games, and there are some things that I've like actually been wanting to play, like. Uh, I think the name of it is This Discord Has Ghosts. Um, and yeah, I've really sounds nice. To, I've really been wanting to play it, and like I'm about to like try to get a group together for it because it's going to be fun. Um, so that that's going to be cool. Um, I, I'm so glad that they're doing so well as well. I think they just like beat their $5 million goal. Yeah, I mean it's a mind-blowingly good bundle. I uh, I paid fifty dollars for it, and it's I still find it's a complete steal. Uh, steal, yeah. sorry. Uh, it's Blades in the Dark in there, which is uh, a very established full role-playing game, which I really recommend. I love the system; it's very interesting if you're into heist. Most Ritter, which I played recently, so since I played it 
so I could run it, you play uh, mice a bit uh, like uh, I don't know the the bower style, but actual mouse, but with little armor, little spears, and so on. This Troika, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I haven't played it. This Lancer, if you are in Mecha, and uh, Kevin Lovecraft, who was a, a guest here, w really recommended that that game. There's there's just such there's Damn the Man Save the Music, which is a personal favorite of mine, in which you play. Uh, kids in a record shop. Uh, yeah, there's so much stuff in there, and I, I don't even know about the video games which are in there, which seems very interesting too. Yeah, it's it's so cool that they just the fact that they were able to get so many people like that were willing to like donate their craft to uh, this bundle is just amazing. Um, so that's been really um, full to um, be able to see. Um, during all of this. Um, all of this has been quite, like, I've had a hodgepodge of emotions throughout this whole thing. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, Ahmad Aubrey was actually uh, from my hometown. Um, so I, uh, my Facebook feed was full of everything uh, when that happened. Um, and it was, I was feeling a mix of emotions with Ahmaud Aubrey because for a lot of black people, like this is just like another person that this has happened to, like in a like very long growing list. And <clears throat> excuse me, throat's a little bit scratchy. Give me one sec. So my immediate reaction, like, is like, yes, I'm like extremely upset about Amon Aubrey, but I'm like slightly more upset that like now a lot of people are paying attention to like the thing that we've been saying for, for so long. Um, and there was a lot of, I've been having a lot of like tough conversations with friends and I've been like having a lot of, um, I've had to like remove some people from my life because of all of this, um, because I, I am, I have depression and anxiety and a lot of me like keeping up with my mental health is not allowing toxic people in my life because I tend to like try to be the people pleaser and I can't try to please them and be happy with myself. So, um, that was that situation. And then George Floyd happens and like, and everyone that every black person that I've talked to about this has had the same like reaction of, I don't understand why it was George Floyd, or I don't understand why it was Ahmaud Aubrey that got so many people talking and got so many people like actually on our side about this, as opposed to like telling us, Oh, well, all lives matter. Oh, well, don't kneel during the national anthem and all this other stuff. Um, like we're we're all grateful definitely that like we're finally getting the spot the situation is getting the spotlight that it deserves but we're kind of like it's kind of a general confusion as to like what um what exactly is triggering that for everyone um and, and i still don't know honestly um i'm trying to focus on the good that's being done because of it instead of continuing to question it um but it's definitely been like a very large shock to me um the amount of support and the amount of um, people reaching out that I've noticed. Um, sort of the reason behind my like sudden, I literally, so this time last week, I think I had like 275 followers on Twitter and I was following like 300 and something. And I was like, cool, whatever. And I made a tweet um, because there's a huge conversation in the TTRPG community, especially within um, people of color in the TTRPG community of like these shows that like will swear up and down, we can't find black people for our shows or we can't find uh, anyone with melanin for our shows. And I finally like just lost it one day and I tweeted, um, I tweeted that quote and I said, I am black and gay. I uh, have been playing D&D &D for a very long time. I've been um, doing TTRPG stuff like outside of D&D &D for like the past year and I'm experienced, I'm a fast learner. 
and I'm good with safety tools, which like not everyone can be able to say about themselves um, in TTRPG communities. And I wasn't really saying that to promote myself as much to say like, we're out here. Like we're doing the same amount of stuff that you're doing. We're putting in the same amount of work. We're trying our hardest to get, get seats at these tables. And like for you to say that you can't find us is really an insult to the amount of work that we've been putting in. Um, and I, I, I ended the tweet with like, we're here, if you can't find us, you're not looking. Um, and I don't know who got a hold of the tweet because typically what happens is I tweet as if I'm screaming into a void and I expect no response. And I, I, I don't expect anyone to interact with the tweet and I'm just like, it's out there, whatever. Um, I don't know which one of my followers got a hold of the tweet and retweeted it, and then one of their followers saw it and retweeted it. And I, I just remember looking at my phone and like, apparently my phone maxes out at twenty-two Twitter notifications, twenty-four Twitter notifications, and I was like, oh, some a lot of people have seen this. I'm just going to dismiss this for now because no one's like, there's nothing like dire happening, and I'm in the middle of something. And then I get on Twitter and all these people are following me. All these people are reaching out about, um, will you guest on my show, come on my podcast, all this other stuff and nothing like against any of those, but it was sort of just like, I was very overwhelmed, first of all. Um, never had that much of a response from anything that I've done. Um, so I was sort of like, I, I kept telling my friends, I'm just gonna delete my Twitter because this is too much. Um, I'm, I'm gonna deactivate and run away because there's a lot of people who like want to talk to me and want to like show their support and all this other stuff. And I don't know like what to do with all of it. And <clears throat> finally, I was just like, you know what? No, we're taking it and we're going to run with it because like as much as like I preach that we've been like doing the work and we deserve the recognition, I need to believe that about myself. Um, so I started responding and I started like saying, yeah, I'll come on your podcast. Yeah, I'll guest on your show. I'll help you with this charity stream. And like, there's sort of a balance, I'm going to say, between um, accepting all of that for, um, not for yourself necessarily, but accepting all of these opportunities and like not letting yourself get burned out and not letting like, doubt set in because like there have been so many times that I've had the thought that like and like I'm, I'm not saying this against anyone who has reached out I'm, I'm putting this out here right now a lot of the reason that I'm getting so many followers right now and I'm getting so many people retweeting my things and like larger names are like recognizing me for some reason um, a lot of that has boiled down to white guilt um, and I was talking to my friend Matthew about it because uh, I had just like I had just taken a shower and it just hit me like as I was in the shower like washing my hair and I was just like do any of these people genuinely think that the content that I'm putting out is good um, and I had to sit with that for a minute and the next question that I had to ask myself was even if they don't how much do you care about that and the answer was none. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, I'm putting out the content that I want. Um, my Twitch, like I said, uh, I do what I want on my Twitch and I just go with it and have a good time. And sometimes there's people in chat that I interact with. Sometimes I go live on Twitch and no one's there. And it's either way, I'm having a good time. Um, and I'm getting to do that. I'm getting to play uh, other TTRPGs on other people's streams and in, at other people's tables and um, all this other stuff. I'm getting my name and my face out there. And not as much for me to get my name and my face out there, but to say that, like, this is for everybody. Like, the amount of gatekeeping that I've seen within the TTRPG community is astounding. Like. <laughs> for a group of people who have been marginalized in society for liking what they like or whatever for so long, they are so good at saying who can and cannot like 
the things that they like. And I, I've had so many conversations with women in the TTRPG community about how they are perceived and how um, when Alexis first brought this idea of vampires playing vampires in D&D up, um, she tweeted it out and the amount of people who were like in her mentions and in her DMs talking about, oh, you mean Vampire the Masquerade? Oh, I don't think that's going to work and all this other stuff. And I was just like, Alexis knows a bunch about D&D, like way more than most of the people who are in these comments talking right now. Um, and the amount of pushback that she was getting for simply pursuing an idea of something that like she wanted to do and like me and my friends are like yeah sign me up like i'm ready <laughs> um and once like you play tested it like send me the module whatever because i i want this i want this not only in the game that we're playing but i want it in like future games um and just trying to like push through all of that trying to push through the crowds of people saying like oh you need to stop being so sensitive at the table when it comes to safety tools you need to just focus more on combat instead of rp because no one wants to do rp at this this table and all this other stuff that like i've dealt with i've dealt with at like tables that i've stayed at and tables that i've left immediately um and trying to push through all of that before all of this was immeasurably hard. Um, I ended up guessing on Dice Pro Uri, uh, I really don't remember, I was talking to Chase about this last night, I don't remember how I came across Dice Pro Uri. I know that somehow the application to guest on Fire, or to be on Firefly, um, the TTRPG stream, was on my feed somehow. I filled it out and I got accepted. And then all of a sudden, like, all of these people are my friends now. Um, we, we clicked immediately and all this other stuff. And Dice Ferrari is the place that I have felt most comfortable, like, being at their table. Because I know that, one, they value my input. Two, they value my safety at their table. And they are just all around a caring group of people. That doesn't outweigh the fact that I have dealt with racism at the table. I have dealt with sexism at the table, um, transphobia, all sorts of things that I've dealt with. Not, and I'm not like, this didn't happen in like 2008 or even 2012. This happened when I started D and D uh, two, three years ago. Um, this has continued to happen and I like have recently literally within the last week left a group because it happened in 2020 um, and trying to like deal with all of that like trying to push through all of that and like in the midst of me like not only dealing with that at the TTRPG table but also in my daily life I, I always have this conversation about I don't want to deal with fantasy racism because I deal with real life racism and D and D TTRPGs are my escape. So I don't want to have to deal with that there. Um, there's an argument that can be made about, um, you use that to like help prep yourself to like get through it in real life and like more power to those people, but I can't do it. Um, I, it's too real for me. So I, I, I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to do it. And for a lot of people, that's a problem. For a lot of people, that means I can't play at their tables and all this other stuff. Um, but like for me, that's just, that's, that's how I am. And I think now that George Floyd has happened, now that all of these people are like speaking up about like these injustices and there's been a huge like conversation in the TTRPG community about how y'all, how y'all, how they don't um, value the voices of black creators as much as they do white creators. Um, and now all of these people that I know are getting verified on Twitter. All of these people are getting more followers on Twitch and all this other stuff. And like all of us are kind of just like sitting here um, waiting for the other shoe to drop, sort of, um, waiting for people to go away or waiting for. Um, one of the people that have followed me to like 
cause a problem or whatever. And I think collectively, um, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but for me and a lot of the people that I've talked to, it's been like, we're going to like milk this situation. Um, we're going to get the content that we've been wanting to get out, out. Uh, we're going to talk about racism. We're going to talk about the fact that, um, police brutality is an actual thing and all this other stuff. We're going to talk about the stuff that we want to talk about because right now we have your attention. Um, that might not last for a very long time. Like you, it might be the hit thing right now to follow us. And then within a month, it's not, so you unfollow. But right now we're gonna use the space and the platform that we have to get this out because it's been going on for far too long for us to not seize that opportunity, to not um, use our platform in that way to um, uplift these voices, which is why like, one of the things that I am going to continue doing on my streams is I'm going to be, my, my stream is basically going to be a charity stream every time I get on. Um, I That's not going to just last for this month or for the next two months. I'm basically, I was talking to someone the other day, I think I'm going to just like choose a new charity every month that is either like black affiliated, other people of color affiliated, LGBT affiliated, disability affili affiliated. Um, because like these groups need our support and like they don't just need our support because there's a hashtag going around or because everyone's blacked out their profiles and all this other stuff but they need our support because this is real life for them this is everyday life this isn't something that we can turn off so for me a lot of this situation has been like it's been a hodgepodge of emotions because I'm like happy that everyone is finally like seeing me and like I'm getting all of these people who want me on their streams or whatever happy because like finally all these people are like behind us and all these people like understand what we've been saying when we say black lives matter and then the other part of me is like why is it taking you so long why what is going on here that like in 2020 it finally clicked not when we were slaves not when Jim Crow was a thing not when um, the civil rights movement was happening, not when all of this stuff has been happening leading up, but in 2020, the fir for the first time since like we were brought here, we have the majority of people on our side. Um, and it's, it's very hard. It's very hard for me every day to like look at my followers and look at all this other stuff and realize like I'm I'm being followed because it's the trendy thing to do right now. Um, but every day I have to push through that and say, if it's the trendy thing to do, I'm gonna like do my best to put out what I need to put out. Um, and I, I think that's what we're all doing and that's what we're all trying to like get forward is like, if you're gonna like if you're gonna make a tr Instagram trend or whatever out of us, then like, let's actually do some good with that. Um, and I think that's actually very beautiful about the Black Lives Matter movement is that we took this situation, this like thing that we've been dealing with for so long and like this thing that we've been putting forward. And <laughs> even though it got hijacked by so many people and so many groups we're like, we're just going to turn it. We're going to turn it in our favor. We're going to turn it in the favor of the victims. And we are, we're going to continue to push through. Um, so I don't know if you wanted me to go into all of that, but like, that's sort of like what the past week, week and a half has been for me. It's been really wild because like going through all of that while COVID-19 has been going on and all of that other stuff, it's been overwhelming. Um, I I literally said to my friend Matthew the other day, we need a factory reset on 2020 because I can't anymore. There's, I can't have another thing happen that just like throws off my whole life. Like small thing, but I was supposed to go see Mean Girls the Musical next month and it got canceled. And I was like, that was the last thing I was looking forward to in 2020. Thank you. That's great. Um, and it's just, it's maddening, honestly, 
everything that's going on. Um, but I'm so glad that like I've had the strength and so many other people have had the strength to push through and get done the things that they need to get done so that we can like get on the other side of all of this and continue to like exist. So. Uh, there's just one thing I wanted to come clean uh, about is that uh, uh, there's, there's one thing with m the vast, vast majority of the guests I have uh, who are mostly white. Uh, it's not that I don't care about their content, is that I, I, you know, the vast majority of the cases, I don't, I have not consumed what they're doing when I get them on the show. Uh, I get almost whoever and I'm very happy I'm curious to have conversations with them so I'm saying that just I'm not saying that uh, as a as an excuse I uh, should be definitely more proactive to uh, to have a more diverse uh, guests uh, but to say no one should I think in most cases but certainly in the cases of my show uh, ever have qualm about oh does he care or not about what I'm doing uh, I don't mean that as a mean way but uh, I'm I'm just I just care about having a nice conversation with nice people and right. uh, and uh, I, I, again I'm not saying that to, to take down any of the people I, I had as guests I think they were, they were all amazing and they're doing amazing things but uh yeah no one should be ever shy to reach me out to be on the show uh mm. uh and uh and uh, uh you know if there, there's a little queue of people who want to be on the show and there, there are people of colors uh people of minorities or non uh non-binary i uh, will be very happy to put them at the front uh, of the queue which is not very long uh, anyway and uh i mean no it's it's not very long but it's long enough i've got like four or five people if i've got more than that it, things need starts to need, need to be scheduled in advance and it, it's not as spontaneous uh so so yeah just my advice to anyone doing anything out there you know the people who are on the show you see on a lot of shows uh they might have those imposter syndrome things i certainly do have them myself not only in the community, but in my job, constantly. But the people you see on shows are people who just, yeah, they go for it. Uh, and I, and and I'm I'm not saying that to say that's that's an excuse. That's there's definitely other very severe issues and systemic bias and term a personal bias. But just as an advice for absolutely any anyone, uh, don't hesitate to reach me out and to reach other people, and they they'll come back to you and regarding people of colors uh if you want to be on this uh stupid little platform of mine i would be extremely excited to chat with any of you to have you on on board and right now uh reliable reliable you can tell me if i'm an idiot or not because i, I don't know right now i'm sort of uh pulled between reaching out black people to have them on the show or leaving them alone because i I, I cannot even imagine how oh, stressful and demanding and all, all these things of being trans are, are nice and a problem at the same time. And I, I'm not sure if I was reaching out, if I tr was trying to be proactive, I would doing be doing something positive or something negative. So uh, right. now in a month, in a year, three years, if you hear that, if you see that as a video, whoever you are, Feel free to reach me out, and uh, I will make the space uh, for for you. So that that's what I have to say. And uh, with that, I want to apologize to you because, to be honest, I, I rushed in the stream a bit today, and we did not discuss that. And uh, I got in a bit like, oh, uh, I just want you to have a good time, and if you don't, mm. you know, if those conversations come, they will come. And and I was the one who brought them to you to to the thing because I ran out of questions. And I was like, uh, yeah, well, it's I'm, totally okay. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's it. That that's basically been like that's been the thing that's been my life <laughs> right now. So I was pretty much like any interview I walk into, I'm like, that's gonna come up, like whether organically or not, we're gonna talk about it. So <laughs> yeah, it's I guess it's like a role playing game. You you mentioned like this is something we discussed on the show, whether or not discussing questions of racism have their place in role-playing games 
my view is that they can have if it's uh, if the people around the table opted for it and it, mm -hmm. I think it's something appropriate also if it's to develop empathy with people like me who are white and c said who are not exposed to that to maybe develop a bit of um, empathy through gaming not to pile more of it on people who already right. go through it uh, on a daily basis and yeah I think the, r the situation right now is that uh, the scale are falling a bit uh, from our eyes uh, that uh, things are not as rosy as we imagine uh, when we are white and we think that stuff around were more progressive than they are and they're, they're not at all because we are surrounded by symbols, attitudes, mm -hmm. behaviors and so on which are which are not appropriate so uh, so yeah <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Ah, so yeah, <laughs> uh, where do we go from here? <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to play with you sometime. Uh, that would be nice. Huh? Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. It's it's <laughs> there, there are lots of calls at the moment uh, for people of color, uh, for black people to be on shows. Uh, my advice is just answer them and uh, make the most of it. I think you're entirely right. Uh, that's that's the right thing to do. Take advantage of it because that's what everybody does. Whoever you see in the spotlight is someone who said, you know what, uh, I'm going to take advantage of that. Uh, they might be uh, for selfish or good reasons, but uh, long story short, that that's what happened. So yeah. part of the part of me taking advantage of that is also like bringing out characters that you don't typically see. Um, so there's a podcast that I'm going to be on um, that I am going to be playing a character who has lost their hearing, um, but also has no want to uh, get it back, like is completely content being deaf and completely like has adjusted their life how they see necessary and like they're just a normal hero like everyone else they just can't hear um they can read lips they can do sign read sign language if necessary but they can't hear um and i think a lot of the time um not specifically speaking about the disabled community but like when i first started for some reason there was like this innate fear in me to play someone who was black um, because, like, I, we would, like, go around the table and introduce our characters, and I'm like, everyone else is, like, fair-skinned, olive-skinned, like caramel. Um, <laughs> there, there are no dark-skinned people that have been introduced, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not comfortable, so I'm not going to do it. And, like, that happened over and over again. And I, finally, I was just like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's fine. I'm, I'm a black elf. I'm not a drow. I'm not a wood elf. I'm black and um that's just how it's gonna be um and I, i've heard other pe other people of color like talk about the same things about playing their own race in um ttrpgs is sort of a daunting thing because there are all the microaggressions that happen and all the like hoops that you have to jump through just to like get to that point with a lot of groups and um i will say um speaking speaking a little bit on the microaggressions and jumping of hoops that that is a lot of like the struggle of me right now and a lot of black people right now is like am i going to get to this table and someone is going to like say something that offends me am i going to have to deal with a microaggression on my race or my sexuality or something like that because a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now um isn't <clears throat> There is blatant racism that we're seeing, um, especially from uh, some hate groups around the country, but like a lot of the things that some um, non-minority people are having to address is the fact that like the small things that they do can also be perceived as racist and also be hurtful to people in the black community. Um, so that's like a big fear that I have is I'm gonna get to a table and someone's going to say something that's going to offend me and i'm going to either have to a go off in the moment and um just deal with the consequences or b be silent and like try to let it go because like 
at that point, I'm just like, especially like, this has happened to me so many times. Someone says something like, that is definitely racist, like in my eyes and a lot of other people's eyes, and the rest of the table laughs. And I'm like, okay, so I'm the only one here that's like gonna have a problem with this. I'm gonna be outnumbered. Um, and I don't feel comfortable like approaching the situation now because like no one's gonna be on my side. Um, this is part of the reason that I left uh, that Vampire the Masquerade group was someone said something against uh, the Black Lives Matter protests and they were making jokes about it. And finally I said something and the whole community is at that point against me and looking at me like, you shouldn't be um, talking about political things in this group chat and you shouldn't be like doing A, B and C in here and like, just take that elsewhere. This is a safe space or whatever. And I'm like, okay, we can't like define safe space by like, how are we defining a safe space here? Like, because I don't feel safe when you say those things. I, I definitely don't. But like when I come and I like call you out and I say, hey, maybe don't talk about that. Or hey, maybe that's insensitive. It's a problem. And now I'm being the aggressor and like all these other things. And I'm just like, how do I even feel comfortable enough to like play with you guys if this is the um, response that I'm getting? Um, so like that's what I have to deal with a lot of the time coming on shows, um, playing with people in general, uh, answering those roll twenty um, ads for people looking for players. Like, what am I gonna have to deal with when I get to this table? Um, and luckily, like with the groups that I'm still a part of, that's not a problem that I have to deal with. With the groups that I have left for various reasons, it's mostly been because I've had to deal with those things and. I either A, don't have the energy to address it because I address it every day on my day-to-day -day basis and, or B, I did address it and it was, wasn't handled properly. So, um, that, I, I feel like a lot of us are dealing with that, especially now. Um, I, <laughs> my, my friend, um, Alexis, I was talking to her about all of this when it was happening, um, when my Twitter started blowing up and she was like, if you need me to do a broken stair check, don't worry. And I was like, what's a broken stair check? And she's like, basically like if anyone that like has reached out to you might have ill intentions or whatever based off of like the history that me or someone else has had with them. And I'm like, thank you. Because like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> like I have no idea who any of these people are that are in my inbox now that are in my like message requests. Like there are still several people in my message requests that I have not responded to. One, because I'm overwhelmed. And two, because like, I don't want to like open the door to something that might be toxic to me actually. So um, that's been a huge struggle during all of this. And it's taken a lot out of me just to like continue to put myself out there and like, just say, I, I have to remind myself like, if something happens, have the strength to say something. If they don't handle it properly, leave. Because it's past you at that point. It's, it's above me. Um, and that that's confidence within myself that I've had trouble gaining over the years, not only in TTRPG spaces, but also like in school, at work, and all these other things. So like having to deal with it in TTRPG spaces is like especially hard because that's my space to not deal with it, sort of. Um, so, um, being able to have the confidence to like actually handle those situations properly, um, if I can, um, is something that I'm continuing to work on that I've gotten a lot better at over time, but, um, is definitely something that I continue to like push myself to do. So. Yeah, well, uh, I hope, uh, I hope if you join one of my game, uh, I will, uh, I will be appropriate uh, because to be, no, but to be honest, I think I think one point you you raise is how do you react when you are called out for for something, and uh, uh, I think a, a lot of people like me we don't paint ourselves as racist, but we have a number of bias and little things, which are not little, but I mean. I, uh, we grew up, most of us, if not all of us, in uh, in very racist 
uh, environment. Uh, the again, I'm not saying that as an excuse. I'm uh, it's no excuse. Uh, but uh, yeah, this week uh, in the UK, they removed from Netflix and a number of archives some uh, comedy shows, which uh, I watched without you know realizing uh, how severe f some types of humor in that might have been uh i mean people were literally blackfaced in that uh come from a country where uh people think it's uh it's still up to debate well uh yeah was born in country one of the monarchs was a genocidal maniac uh it's, it's never been addressed and uh yeah we still have uh yeah tradition aimed at children with blackfaced characters uh which anyway it's not about me, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, so, but yeah, I think what matters is that uh, it doesn't matter if that we paint ourselves as being ra not racist, is to accept that uh, whether or not how we paint ourselves, we might do things which are hurtful uh, towards a number of people, not just people, black people, but uh, a number of people, and we need to react positively to. I mean, the X card is a good example. We got the X card, and mm. and it gives this illusion uh, that oh, the X card is there. So if there's something wrong, someone might have pushed the X card. But if you don't create an environment where people are comfortable using the X card, and then if you re right. react poorly uh, when someone uses the X card, or if afterwards you react poorly, and on top of that you say, but why didn't you use the X card? That's that's part of it's a huge part uh, of the problem. So so yeah. And and I think like every time I've had uh, safety tools explained to me, every time it's come up at the table, um, every time we talk about the X card, it's we if an X card is pulled, we are going to stop. Uh, if we need to rewrite what just happened, we will do that. If we need to take a break, we will do that. But like no questions asked. Like you don't need. You don't need to give the reasons as to why you've pulled the X card. The X card is there, and we're going to respect that. Um, so, and I I think there are a lot of people out there who like say that they use safety tools, but like forget that aspect of it. Like, you when you agree to use safety tools, you're agreeing to like the terms of someone being able to remove consent at any time, um, without reason, without like discourse like if i remove consent like that's it we're gonna go back we're gonna do what we have to to like make that not happen um but a lot of people like a lot of people don't understand that concept and like it's a conversation that i'm always having of like and something that my coworker always says to me consent is an ongoing thing um and like she she says it like as we're like having conversations about something and i'm just like Sarah, you know we can talk about that, or like you can, you know, you can ask me about that. And she's just like, "Look, consent's an ongoing thing. You can revoke it at any time. I'm just like giving you that opportunity if you feel like you need to." And I super respect that out of her, and like super respect that at the tables that I'm at, that like we recognize that consent can be revoked. Like I can. <laughs> there, there are campaigns that I'm in now where like. At the beginning of this campaign, police brutality was maybe at a yellow of like, maybe put it behind the veil or maybe not a lot of it. But right now, it's a full red. Um, and like, if I see police brutality in game, I will definitely be pulling an X card. Um, and I don't need to have a conversation about it. I don't need to like, have get you to try to have me explain, oh, well, why do you feel this way? Or well, maybe you can just like, adjust how you see this or whatever no that's not what needs to happen i've pulled x card we need to rewrite like we need to swerve away from this because i'm being triggered in this moment like it doesn't matter that <laughs> it doesn't matter that this is where you thought the story was going it doesn't matter that this is where you wanted the story to go like one of your players does not feel safe that is the end of it um so it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad that so many people are using safety tools now. I, I just hope that everyone is using them properly as well. What well, are tools? I mean, I mean, it's a stupid comparison, but uh, I'm an architect, and uh, 
when I see all my colleagues are using tools developed by architects and used by architects and they work with them and they are literal tools they are not yeah. practices based on culture people are rubbish at using tools 90 percent <laughs> of the time they have zero curiosity about doing that properly and even if you're good with the tools you need to to keep training yourself and and having a review if you're doing things properly so so it's not yeah it's not a magic wand which waves away things it's a it's a starting point uh so and I'm yeah myself I'm new with that uh, I'm learning to to use this so so yeah it's just uh, we need to put in the work whatever we do uh, we need to it's work and it's effort and but it's to the benefit of everybody feeling safe as safe as possible and uh, everybody having a, a positive experience uh, as much uh, as much as we can. Um. Well, uh, I don't know if you want to di discuss something else. Uh, I will, I'm here for as long a, a, as you want, uh, or we we can cut it short uh, now. We've been talking for for more than an hour, but uh, if you want to go on, uh, we we can we can talk about <laughs> something else. Uh, I, I would just say I'm mixed. Uh, I yeah, go ahead. I, I don't have really anything else to talk <laughs> about. Um, I'm pretty much promoting everything on my Twitter at this point. Um, like I said, my, my stream is going to be 100% dedicated to like charity and all that stuff. Um, right now, this month, uh, I'm donating to Color of Change. Uh, we, I set the goal at 100, and they broke that like in the middle of my first stream. Like They got really close right before the stream started, and I was like, I just put the link out. Can we calm down? <laughs> um, so I set it at 100. We broke that. I set it at 250. And I was like, I'll just have that ready for the next stream. I haven't streamed again. They've already broke 250. So now I set it by 100. Um, so that's uh, the work that I'm doing this month is color of change. Um, I'm going to be switching it up every month. Um, I'm also like trying to do my best to promote any other charity streams that I know are going on. Uh, for example, Dice Priori uh, this week has been doing um, a charity, doing charity streams associated with Asada's Daughters, a group of black creative women. Um, so we're promoting their stuff, we're donating to them and like putting all of our energy towards them there. Uh, and they're gonna be doing a stream tonight um, that's like their regular Friday night game. Uh, that's going to be that. So that's going to be cool. Um, and then I have another stream in the morning. That's going to be that as well. Um, I pretty much like that's my Twitter feed right now. And that's my life is I'm going to continue like promoting as much stuff as I can. And um, I really hope my followers are ready for it. I hope they don't think that I'm going to like slow down on that. Um, but that's that's most important to me right now is right now and forever is helping people who need it um so yeah that that's pretty much all i have left to say really uh is check out all of the stuff that i'm promoting uh on my twitter um for like updates on charity streams and other places that you can help out um so yeah well i will check with you uh when once we're done uh via uh private message so you uh i will look up the the links of the thing you mentioned and if, if there's anything I, i'm missing uh you you can uh, add them and i'll put everything in the description of the episode on youtube or uh in audio format it's uh, released a, a bit later uh and uh, so people can uh, can go click it and share it and uh and yeah uh, you just come back whenever you want just let me know uh, you yeah. want to come back and uh, send me people who would like to to come for a chat and uh, I'd be more than uh, happy for having and uh, especially you're popular you know it's uh, got a lot of people compared to uh, our usual guests so uh, even if I'm um, yeah it's uh, yeah it's all positive <laughs> nice yeah and uh, yeah and uh, in one month two months three months six months three years just um, 
whenever you need something just uh, just let me know uh, and I'll be happy to to retweet or having have you uh, back on the show that's good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great time. Well, thank you so much. Uh, among the, the many invites you're getting to, to have picked this one, uh, I'm very uh, I'm sincerely thankful uh, that you did. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to Reliable's Twitch channel. And uh, you have a YouTube channel as well with uh, your videos afterwards? or I don't. I don't have it right now. I'm getting that set up. <laughs> so it's I'll so much work <laughs> it's so annoying yeah <laughs> great uh, thanks everyone bye bye guys